Smith will kick it away. NC State six and three on the season. Wake is four and five. ACC football on the CW. And here comes Devon Claiborne on the return. Up to the 25. And out of bounds near the 30 for Claiborne on the return for Wake Forest. After the 29 yard return, Mitch Griffiths will lead the offense onto the field for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, one of three that you've seen here for Wake Forest this year, but he's been the main guy. Kern's been in there, Marucci as well. And he's, he's it's got to start with him in taking care of that football. Nine fumbles from number, number 12 alone. We've got to protect for him. Last game for Wake Forest was November 2nd, a loss at Duke 24-21 on a last second field goal. A pass to 35 yard line for Griffiths in a six yard run. Jalen Scott on the stop. Wow. Maybe Charlie Horse or something as he takes it. Hit comes up limping after that nice gain of six. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Kern is available. He came in and started in that Virginia Tech game but then got injured at the end of that game. Marucci has a win under his belt and a start against Pitt. That win against Pitt was a home victory. Griffiths over the middle. That is knocked away and incomplete. He was looking for Jamal Banks. All right, let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Walmart. Walmart doesn't just have everything for the holidays. We have your thing. Welcome to Walmart. And a six-year guy, Michael Jurgens at the guard spot today. He's going to be big with that line protecting his quarterback. And Demond Claiborne already has made a presence with a nice return. A very good back, very bursty. He's going to hit those gaps right. Demon Deeks, 10th in the conference on third down, a cluttered pocket, and down goes Mitch Griffiths. That's a loss of five. Savion Jackson got to the quarterback on third down. Yeah, nowhere to go. That pocket collapses. All those lanes plogged up. There's Jackson. And sack number 28 for this Wolfpack defense to get things started here on the opening drive in Winston-Salem today. So the punt for Wake from Ivan Mora. Junior from Dalton, Georgia. Just got it away. Take a bounce near the 40 and tumble forward for the Demon Deeks. It's down near the 15. And the ball finally comes to rest at the 16. 54 yards on the punt for Ivan Mora. And now Brennan Armstrong, who started the first five games of the season, the transfer from Virginia, and the starting quarterback this afternoon for the Wolfpack. Now going back to his days in Charlottesville, his teammates used to call him Braveheart. He, he willed that team to so many wins. And talking about the confidence there in the open, it's great to have. But don't try to do too much. Play within this system. And this system's coming out with some tricks early. Concepcion. First down. Concepcion across midfield. Trying to break away. And the Deeks will catch him near the 20. KC. Concepcion for the Wolfpack. Wow, how do we get creative in getting the ball to number 10? Jet sweeps, handoffs, passes. Here's a reverse to start the game, and it's off to the races. One of the most electric players in all of college football, and he's a true freshman, Casey Concepcion. Wow. Nice, and, and Robert and I has just he's been having a blast the last few weeks he got so creative in that win over Miami when he had the two quarterbacks in there quite a bit and now just down to Brennan Armstrong no MJ Moore is here today to throw on the field at the same time but he still has his key weapon KC Concepcion so the first play from scrimmage for NC State on the road this afternoon goes for 68 yards in a career-long rush for the freshman Concepcion from Charlotte, North Carolina, and into the red zone for NC State. That's Coit, shy of the 20. Let's check out today's impact players, brought to you by Walmart, NC State on offense. Yeah, Anthony Belton, the left tackle, he got himself six pancake syrup bottles after the Miami game, putting those defensive linemen on their backs. You get a pancake, a syrup bottle, and Penix. 
the tight end. Banged up a little bit earlier this year. I'd like to get him incorporated a little bit more into the game plan. It can be big for Brennan Armstrong here today. Ninth in the red zone this season of the ACC. Looking down near the two and stepping into the end zone. Julian Gray with a twisting grab from Brennan Armstrong. A 20-yard TD toss. The lefty on the run a little bit. Look at Dave Doran down there with this group celebrating a little bit. It, admittedly, it's it's been a, a rough week for him as we talked to him on the Zoom call a couple days ago. Everything that's been going on off the field, even after becoming the winningest coach in NC State history. Sixth TD pass of the season for Armstrong. Gray made the catch. His first receiving TD of the year. NC State is in the end zone and leads. Thirty-three Wake Forest seniors playing their final game and being honored prior to the start of this game. NC State first in the end zone. Brennan Armstrong. 20-yard touchdown pass to Julian Gray. And a 7-0 NC State advantage. Big play in that drive from KC Concepcion. Set up the TD. Claiborne on the return. Second effort near the 25-yard line for Claiborne. Let's take one more look at that touchdown to Julian Gray. And roll into his left. The lefty here, Brennan Armstrong, is going to force this secondary to make a decision and react. You got to hit that window in a hurry, those little zone windows. And he does just that. A beautifully thrown football and a nice play call. It only took a couple good play calls by Robert and I, but NC State punching it in on their opening drive after their defense stood. Kicking off to start the game, the sack by Savion Jackson. So here goes try number two for Mitch Griffiths. And company. Penalty markers are out. Ball start. Offense number 62. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Today's impact players brought to you by Walmart with NC State on D James. Davin Van, we make a big deal about Peyton Wilson, justifiably so in the motor that he has. But the big man, he's got a motor too, puts it all on the line. And Aiden White, a special cornerback, has already broken up a pass here early in this football game. White had a new reception in the end zone in the victory against Miami a week ago. Open man, 30-yard line. Griffiths pass on target. Keyshawn Williams makes the grab for 11 yards. Taking good protection that time for Griffiths. Stands in there strong in that pocket and fires a nice one in there. 56-year-old Dave Clausen on that sideline. Wake Forest needs a couple of wins in their final three games to make it to their eighth straight bowl game. Justice Ellison. No gain for Ellison. Peyton Wilson in on the tackle along with Jalen Scott. Number 11, last time we had this Wolfpack team, he left the field against Clemson. Buckus Award semifinalist. Can I get the telestrator? Just, just cross off that semifinalist. Let's put, <laughs> let's put winner on there. He's got my vote. Man, he's been fun to watch. I'm glad we've had a lot of NC State games this year because he is really fun to watch. Plays his guts out every single time out there. And he's got the knee brace on, but it certainly doesn't seem like it's affected him that much. Griffiths. Four receivers to choose from, and he got swallowed up. Devon Benny up in his grill with a loss of six on a sack. They're all coming right here. Tony Gibson loves to bring that pressure. And in a hiccup, Betty's back there. The junior from St. Thomas Aquinas down in the 954 Fort Lauderdale. And Again, a sack to end the drive for Dave Clausen's Deacons on offense. Jalen Coit is second of the ACC in punt return yardage. Punt from Mora. 
Coit will watch it bounce at the 40. Kind of goes sideways and gets touched by the Deeks. Decent field position. Coming up for NC State. Saturday tips off December 2nd only on the CW. There are the matchups to get the season going at Miami and Notre Dame. Duke on the road at Georgia Tech. Duke the defending champs in the ACC. Tough loss at home against Arizona yesterday, but it's early in the basketball season and we'll see you on December 2nd. Work to do here in Winston-Salem. Raphael left side. He'll drag some Demon Deeks with him for six yards on the rush. It may be early in the basketball season, but we found out after the Clemson win that NC State is not a basketball school. Oh, that, that's a whole other story. Let's take a look at our ref cam presented by DirecTV. Stop compromising. Start watching. Upgrade to DirecTV, the ref cam. What a view that is. I see why they wanted to jump on that. That's uh, That's been our, our favorite <laughs> shot here. I was waiting for somebody to put their name on that ref cam. That Batesy Paint tried to, but I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Second possession of the game for Brennan Armstrong. Tries to get it out on the edge. We'll see. First down yardage. <laughs> and he's into Wake Forest real estate with a nine yard play. Nick Anderson on the stop for Wake. Now, a pancake is one thing, but I'm not sure what you want to call this Anthony Belton. I mean, it's a squish. Like, I mean, he just he just goes out there and lays down on that defensive back. A good job by the big man to get out there and lead the way. And then an excellent play behind him. But uh, Belton getting up and moving. 6'6", 336 pounder out of Tallahassee. And a first down Wolfpack. TD pass already in this game for Brennan Armstrong. That's Concepcion. Got a couple there. Today's impact players brought to you by Walmart. It's Wake Forest on defense. Yeah, Tasheen Davis, their 30 on the line, has been so good there at the defensive end spot. Almost a tackle and a half, a tackle and a half for loss a game. Two fumble recoveries. Jacob Roberts has been big time from his linebacker spot as well. Leads the team with 62 tackles. Armstrong pressured. Got away for the moment that he's dragged down. Right at about the 46 and a loss of four. Jaheen Davis in pursuit of Brennan Armstrong. Right on cue, huh? There you have circled. It's Jacob Roberts. There's the quick shift. It looked a little bit awkward, and they just leave Jacob Roberts. He gets a free shot, but finally Davis to drag him down. That's pretty good right there on our, our Walmart players to watch. We got both of them involved in that big play, and Brennan Armstrong almost able to get it for no loss, but it's third down and 11 here. 20th career sack for Chasheen Davis for Wake Forest, and a flag is out on third down. Number 74, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Gary Patterson is our referee. This became a little bit of an issue. You hear the beeping out there? It's like the big truck back there. I think that's Belt backing up. <laughs> but is it, you remember early on in the season, going into that Marshall game, this was a, this was a bit of an issue. These, these little five-yard penalties, they, they may feel a little watching on TV, but... That momentum that you create and that it takes away. They have done a good job of cleaning it up, so they can't start that again. Armstrong out of that pocket, throws on the run, and it's incomplete along the sideline. Porter Rooks, number four, the intended receiver that brings a fourth down for NC State. Nice job, Alec Mustafa has become the voice of this defense, and that was a much needed stop. It was excellent field position to start once again for NC State. Forced to punt it away right here. Now the offense has just got to get something going. A little something can't give up all those sacks. See so if they can hit them with a big play of some kind. Caden okay, Newcaster on the punt. Taylor Morin. That'll bounce into the end zone. 51 yards on the punt and the touchback. So when we come back, Wake Forest will have the football. NC State has the lead on a Brennan Armstrong. Veterans Day here in Winston-Salem. Mark Irwin 
A former Wake Forest soccer player and a Hall of Famer here at Wake Forest. He spent time in the United States Army Infantry, led the team out onto the field prior to the start of the game this afternoon. We certainly salute all of the veterans and the sacrifices that they have made. A flag is out. Number 52, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Spencer Clapp is number 52. Yeah, Clawson's upset with it. And Spencer's over there looking at number 11 lined up, trying to get a jump. He tried to get a little bit of a jump coming off the edge. He got a little twitchy and jumped. And so just like that, you're looking at a first down and 15. Adding on five before you even snap the football on this drive. Griffiths pressured again and dragged down at the five. Another a sack. Jackson, he's got another one, James. Yeah, and it's just, you got to put a little bit more friction on a guy than this right here. He just blows right by Luke Pettibon. Lowers the boom on Mitch Griffiths. They've just been living here in the first quarter with 5.30 left to go. The third sack already, one on each series. And now with that penalty, it's second and 23. It's a loss of eight, the second sack of the game for Savion Jackson. They try to move that pile beyond the 10 yard line on the ground for Wake Forest, and they got five. Griffiths tackled by Caden Fordham. You know, you, you finally get a, a stop from your defense. You get out there and they, they get you the ball back. And just unable to do anything with it. And here's a situation where you can't afford a turnover and giving them the short field. So they gotta be a little bit safe here. Williams. Hard hit up near the 20. By Peyton Wilson. 10 yards on the play that's back to the original line of scrimmage and not nearly enough. It would have been a nice investment to get a parrot that just says Peyton Wilson, ah, Peyton Wilson. <laughs> just repeat over and over and over and just turns and burns. He can fly and when he gets there, he lowers the boom. Just big time hit. Here we go. Punt from Mora. That's Coit. Wanting the fair catch and making it 46 yards on the punt and almost four and a half seconds of hang time on the punt by Mora. Tuesday on Inside the NFL, the guys take a look back at the pivotal AFC North matchup between the Browns and Ravens. Plus, can the Jaguars continue their stellar play against the 49ers? Inside the NFL, free for everyone, Tuesday, 8 7 Central, only on the CW. Duval. Jacksonville. No. That's three three and outs to start the game for Wake Forest after that pump by Mora. And now Armstrong back to work, hands it off. Michael Allen. Allen got hit by Mustafa, who came up to make the play just a yard. Jacob Roberts in the vicinity as well for Wake Forest. Good job by Malik right there, refusing to be blocked. Comes off of that block. Just, if nothing else, he's turning that runner back in. But not only does he turn him, he drops him. Transfer from Richmond. Brandon Armstrong is the transfer from Virginia, where he threw 58 career TD passes for the Cavaliers. We have Tanner slings this one to the 40. Probably about a yard short of the line to gain. Eight yards on the play. I think that's the first catch there for Anthony Smith, a guy who's who's had a few opportunities. He's run past a few defenders here in recent weeks. This guy that coming in, they thought maybe he'd be on that first unit that didn't have the best two and eight camp. Went down to the scout team and just worked, and they finally decided, hey, we got to move him up. He's making too many plays. But he can really run. First catch of the season for Smith. Now this is third and short. Armstrong breaking tackles and diving for the Wake Forest 40 yard line. They'll mark him at the 41. Slocum made the tackle. 15 yards. Armstrong. Yeah, just look at him. the patience and the vision. You can tell he's been there before. You can also can tell he, he plays this game with a lot of heart. And 
a lot of grit, and his teammates really appreciate him for that. He's a captain and continued to be a captain. When MJ Morris became the starter, he was a good team player, good in that locker room. And here he's getting another chance to lead this team down the home stretch. Coach Gordon told him no pressure, cut it loose, hands it off. Raphael. Minimal gain as we go down to Trevor Scales on the sidelines. Yeah, fellas, Brennan Armstrong, his contributions in the run game is what he's always provided, at least as of late for this NC State offense. He's a very tried and true runner. He's obviously a big body, and he just adds to the element as far as what that Wake Forest defense has to account for on every single step that he's in the ball game now. Absolutely, and he's been with that gentleman right there for quite some time. And last year in mine was up in Syracuse, New York with the orange, but reunited in Raleigh to begin this season. And he certainly knows, Trevor, what he can do with those legs. Used him quite a bit in Charlottesville. Armstrong, the leading rusher this season for NC State. That play on the ground goes nowhere. Delbert Mims, loss of one. Justin Williams, number 44, leading the way for the Wake Forest. Demon Deacon defensive union, unit, Kevin Pointer as well, number 91. Pointer's had some good games here recently, playing really hard right now. 91 on that defensive front. As Williams goes back over there to take a breather on a third down. NC State, one of two so far on third down. Eighth in the conference in this situation. That pocket falls in. Armstrong with some room to run. 30 yard line and more. And down close to the 20 for Brennan Armstrong. Hazen had the tackle after a 20 yard gain. Tom, they had him. They had him bottled up. Look at the smile on his face, having a good time. And watch him here. I mean, they come flying in there, and he just got to protect that football few turnovers there early on in this season he finally gets it tucked away and it's off to the race has got a nice block over there by Julian Gray just the patience to let pick it apart and not panic in those situations shows the experience and the confidence of number five first down Wolfpack Armstrong was the leading rusher against Miami in the victory with 51 yards I play near the 20 for Kendrick Raphael, and that will be the final play of the quarter. NC State after the first 15 minutes, James, with a 7 0 lead on the eight yard run on the first play from scrimmage. Additionally, the three sacks by NC State on defense as well. Armstrong takes off. Down to the 10 for Brennan Armstrong, and another bruising run for number five. 12 yards on the run, Kalen Carson. Making the stop right at the 10 yard line for NC State back into the red zone. And you know, you, you say bruising run. I mean, how many times, how many times do you talk about a quarterback and say, oh, another bruising run? But that's what you get with Brennan Armstrong. I mean, he's he, he's not sliding very much. He just he, he's taking those hits to some of those defenders. Tough guy out of Shelby, Ohio. He's seen action in eight games this season because he comes in as a rusher as well. And that's down to about the five for Delbert Mims. He's a short yardage specialist. He got four on the rush. We told you about NC State in the red zone, James, ninth in the conference. When they get inside the 10, watch out. Yeah. 14 of 14, 12 touchdowns, couple of field goals, and five rushing touchdowns from Mims in yeah. that situation and he didn't have any touchdowns coming into this year the junior Mims he's got six tied for the lead on the team with Concepcion Concepcion has the football in the direct snap trying to stretch it out turn that corner put the shoulder down barreled his way to maybe the three-yard line a couple of yards for Concepcion. They'll mark him at the two. Direct snap. Here's here's Robert and I getting creative again. How do we get it to number 10? Lined him up behind the quarterback and snap it right to him. And I mean, and see, that's the thing. It's one thing for Brennan Armstrong at 212 pounds to lower that shoulder at the end of those runs. But Casey Concepcion, he lowered his shoulder there at the end of that one. And, and 
Brought a hit to the defender. Right into our cameraman, Larry, over there. Hope you're all right, Larry. From short yardage on third down, trying to get to the end zone. Delbert Mims, maybe a yard. They're going to mark him short of the goal line. Usually it's an automatic for Mims from this range, James, but Wake able to stop him short, although Armstrong thought he was in. And now it's fourth down for Coach and I. How about the 12th play of the drive coming up right here, James, on fourth down? Yeah. NC State had a big goal line stand against Miami last week. Let's see if Wake can pull one out right here. Fourth and goal. Armstrong has it. Trying to follow a block to the end zone. And he's in. Brennan Armstrong barrels into the end zone for the touchdown for the pack. There is a flag down. That flag is thrown. Ruling on the field of the touchdown. There's a flag in the After end zone. The play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number one defense. That's his first unsportsmanlike. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's Kalen Carson with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And, and these are a couple penalties, the frustration penalties. The cost of football team. And, some big 15 yarders were very costly in the end of that Duke game. A 24 21 loss for Wake Forest. And so that's now four rushing touchdowns on the season for Armstrong. Braden Narvison makes it 14 0. Leading passer and leading rusher is back, and he's bringing the wood and into the paint. A nice stone. 14-0, NC State has the lead here in the second quarter. Brennan Armstrong just took it in. KC Concepcion. He's the, watching himself on yeah. the big board there. Isn't that great? Love what a it. great shot. Yeah, 65 yards on the run to set up that first touchdown pass from Armstrong to Gray at 20 yards. Careful here now with that 15-yard penalty. A little sky kick or boot it away. Boot it. You know, we're all the physicality down here. Things change on Wednesdays. The CW stands for Cozy Wednesdays. And this Wednesday is an all new cozy episode of the CW's hit show, Sullivan's Crossing, based on the New York Times best selling series and starring Morgan Cohan, Chad Michael Murray, and Scott Patterson. The CW's Cozy Wednesday with Sullivan's Crossing starts this Wednesday at 8 7 Central. Catch up on all the episodes so far on the CW app. Mm. Some slippers and some tea. Gosh. And we also have a change of quarterback. Michael Kern is into the game, James, from Wake, number 15. The handoff goes nowhere. The ball carrier gets spun down. Demond Claiborne, sophomore, loses two. So here's Kern. I told you about his action earlier this season against Virginia Tech. He was injured at the end of that game. A shoulder injury. He just recently cleared to play. And Santino Marucci had to play in that pit game and actually got the win. Man. Tom, these guys are just, just getting up and flying around on defense so hard, just suffocating. That time it's Jalen Scott. Just took his blocker right into the ball carrier. So here's a third down and long. Not a great situation for any of Dave Clawson's quarterbacks to be in. So far, just nine total yards for Wake Forest. And they haven't converted a third down. They were five of 13 on third down in the loss at Duke on November 2nd, their most recent game. Kern got rid of it. Warren couldn't hang on to it. Tried to go up and get it near the 35-yard line. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. You're gonna see the ISO on the receiver right here in this shot. The ball's gonna come to him late as he comes back to help out his quarterback, but he's gotta catch it right through his hands. And what you didn't see was Kern. Pressure came late and he took a big shot. 
not quite 100 percent coach is telling us so any shot to that shoulder isn't going to feel very good for Michael Kern defense stands again. Coit wants to bounce out of bounds. 32 yards on the punt. We'll take a timeout. 10.48 to go in our second quarter. NC State and Wake Forest on the CW. Sir, your check. Ah, Trailing NC State 14 0 in the second quarter. Passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown for Brennan Armstrong. This out near midfield. On the play for NC State, that's first down yardage. Raphael down to Trevor. Fellas, y'all mentioned the quarterback change. Michael Kern stepping in for Mitch Griffiths. Notice on the sideline, there was a noticeable limp as he was uh, welcoming the team back to the sideline. You'll see the injury earlier on here. Came down hard on that right knee. We do not have any official word as to what specifically the injury is and whether or not the quarterback change was solely due to that. We will certainly keep you updated as we find out more, though, Tom. Great work, Trevor. Jalen Scott had that hit on Griffiths, forced him out of the game after that third series. That's only a yard. Kendrick Raphael, the freshman from Naples, Florida. Raphael, a big part of that Miami win last weekend at Raleigh for NC State. Big touchdown run late after the goal line stand. It was an offense, both offenses. With two pretty good defenses out there having a tough time moving it up and down the field all night long, but not when it mattered the most for NC State. Went 97 yards after that goal line stand. Going to run it again. A little bit of room down to the 40 and diving forward. Seven yards on the play. Rafael again. Nick Anderson on the stop. Rafael's TD run, James, that you mentioned. 31 yards late in the fourth quarter put NC State up. 17 6, and they won it 20 to 6 did not allow a touchdown in that game. First time since November of, of 2011 in an ACC game. Third and short now. After the win a week ago against Miami for NC State. Armstrong wants to do it. He will. Armstrong, the 20-yard line, towards the goal line, diving for it and just short. He'll mark him inside the one as guards pulled him down and saved the touchdown. 38 yards for Brennan Armstrong. Well, folks back in Shelby, Ohio that are fans of Brennan Armstrong, they, they've got to feel good watching him. Every time he gets up off the turf, he's got a great big smile under that bright red mustache. He's having, he's having a good time in what he thought might not be another start here this year for NC State. And what a great job by Kendrick Raphael that time on the lead block. That extra blocker in the backfield leading the charge. And Armstrong doing the rest. The handoff at the goal line. Second effort and in for the touchdown. Mims. The signal made by the official right on top of it. Mims appeared to be stopped and he would not quit on the play. And Mims slams it in from a yard out. I'm going to attempt to point after touchdown. They did have him stopped right here. Look at him. One, two, three guys. He just keeps those legs driving. And that second lunge, good call. Tip crosses the plane <laughs> just to make sure he stretches it over after. A touchdown scoring machine. You mentioned it. Anytime they get down inside that 10 yard line, it's just about a layup. That's now seven rushing touchdowns on the season for Mims and six of those inside the 10 yard line of short yardage. And NC State now 16 for 16 inside the 10 this season with 14 touchdowns and a couple of field goals. Now again, it was a second effort from Mims and they may be taking a look at this, James. It did look like the tip of the football crossed the plane on that first second effort. Here we'll get another look at it along with the replay officials. It's impressive though when you've got three bodies hanging on to you. Right there, that ball is across the plane. That's a good look. You can even see the laces. A lot of times the ball being dark in the shadows, it's hard to tell. But the lace is taking care of you knowing exactly where it is. They're wrapped up and I didn't see the body part. After Go further down. review, the ruling on the field stand, touchdown. 
Not enough evidence to overturn the call, which on the field was touchdown as Mims stretched out for the goal line and end zone. And look at this chance. 20 to nothing. Eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Dave Doran's team poured it on in the first half. Three for three in the red zone. You know, the, the off the field talk that surrounded this program throughout the week with Morris Redshirt and coming off of two pretty big wins, Clemson and then backing it up with the Miami win. You know, it's, it's, it's a situation this late in the season. Maybe you kind of like coast into this one, but there's no coasting into this one. It almost helps to rally the troops like you're coming off NC State. We'll also get to highlights from around the ACC as well as highlights from our game here at a legacy stadium. All of that and so much more coming up on the Super Two Subaru Halftime Report at the break. Thank you, Trevor. And yeah, we look forward to Trevor taking us through halftime. Dave Doran with that win last week against Miami. Most wins in school history and now for the ninth time as the head coach of the pack, they are bowl eligible under Dave Doran. And leading 21 to nothing, just over eight minutes to go in our second quarter. Looks like Griffiths is up. There's Kern. Looks like Kern probably going back in. So it will be Michael Kern once again. Little little teaser for that halftime segment on the winningest coach in NC State history. Doran told us on the Zoom call when you asked him at the end, Tom, just you know how all the success there as a head coach. He said, "Well, just when it comes to winning games, it starts with not losing them, not losing them, and taking care of that football, cutting down on the penalties. One thing that they've done a good job of here." Lately. Kern up there midfield along the sideline and incomplete looking for Banks. NC State, by the way, three of those wins for Dave Doran coming on the CW prior to this afternoon. We go at Aiden White. Aiden White's heck of a cornerback. And you got to do it though. You, 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 you have got to challenge these guys. You got to make them think that you're going to run by them and run deep and put a fear into them. Clemson. Couldn't get past him. Secondary has been so good for Tony Gibson. Over the middle and complete 30-yard line. Cameron Height, five yards on the play. Get one right here. Here they come. Just 25 total yards, trying to add to it. That pass over the shoulder attempt, and the ball bounces away. Morin almost made a circus grab against Kennedy. Would have been an amazing grab at that. Great adjustment to go back and get it. I mean, he had it, James, and Kennedy was able to knock it away at the last second. Yeah. He's got to survive the ground down there. And, man, looking that in there, it's, that's one that the Wake Forest certainly needed. Good job by Kennedy not giving up. The punt sails out of bounds. Warren, by the way, has 153 career catches and almost made a spectacular grab for Wake Forest. And boy, do they need it. Trailing NC State on the CW. Back in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So glad that you're with us on the CW. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Trevor Scales on the sideline. Our outstanding college football production crew with you. From the Legacy Stadium, it's been all NC State. Brennan Armstrong in at quarterback. MJ Morris declaring his red shirt after starting the last four games. Three and one as a starter. Returning to Brennan Armstrong, who started the season in that position for NC State. This is Raphael for a short game. Pretty good day for Armstrong so far, James. He's the leading rusher in the game. Six carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown run. Also has thrown a touchdown to Julian Gray. First receiving TD of his career for Gray. Mims had the other short yardage TD run in this second quarter. New life for number five and complimentary football. Here, Dave Dorn talking about quite a bit. Even the special teams playing well. They're coming close to blocking a few punts in this one, too. Raphael up to the 48. He got five yards. Trevor. Got word from the NC State sideline that they did take a hit to their run game. Michael Allen, senior running back number two, is out for the rest of the game with what they're calling an upper body injury. 
Keep you closer on anything if that changes. However, that seems to be the final verdict for his day. That pass batted down and incomplete. Kevin Pointer got a piece of it. That'll bring up fourth down for NC State. See it from ref can't right on it. Ball was hit. Everybody's fighting over it while that ball's in the air. There can't be an interference anymore. Danny Worrell, our umpire, kind enough to wear ref cam this afternoon, making the call on the deflection. Noon Kester scoops up that low punt. Warren watches it bounce inside the 10, hustling after it and into the end zone. Once that ball breaks the plane in college football, it is a touchback. 52 yards on the punt. Wake 0 for 5 on third down. Savion Jackson, a big reason for that. Guys coming from all angles. Tony Gibson drawing it up, and these guys going out there and executing it. Betty in for a sack as well. Jackson has two, three sacks today. And Wake zero first downs with 5.39 left in the first half. Still looking to move those chains for the first time on offense and with a new quarterback and Michael Kern out of Lake Nona in the Orlando, Florida. 30 total sacks on the season now for NC State. That is third in the ACC. They've got three today, as James mentioned. Long pass to the sideline, and Morin has it. Taylor Morin, 16 yards on the grab, and his first catch and first first down of the game for Wake. Well, that'll work. Morin's been targeted three times, had the one go through his hands, and one was almost an amazing catch. Knocked away by Kennedy. This time it'll stick in the first first down of this football game for the Deeks. Morin playing in his 47th game at Wake Forest. That also got tipped at the line on the attempt by Kern. Looked like it was Morin cutting over the middle. C.J. Clark is number five. Aiden White part of that secondary for NC State. But what they've done in the secondary, James, 13 interceptions to lead the ACC this season for the Wolfpack. Well, Wormy, that's that's without two of their top four safeties. Rakeem Ashford and Jakeem Harris both out for the season. Pressure on Kern. Warren trying to come back to the football. Turn and make the grab, and it bounces off of Warren near midfield. Whether you're going at battle or white. Got some pretty good corners there, good coverage, and they almost slipped one in there a little bit of a back shoulder Dave Doran's pleading his case wanting a flag on that one but won't get it so here's your third down and 10 now and Clawson's team James 0 for 5 on third down just got a first down and a catch by Morin can they convert here from their own 36 pressure is coming they picked up the blitz one on one play incomplete to the artificial surface that football bouncing around Jamal Banks Covered by Shaheem Battle, number seven. Excellent coverage by Battle right there in the hip pocket. But the ball thrown a little bit short and behind. The only place it could be in adjusting and almost pulling it in, Jamal Banks. You know, some of these are tough catches, but they've just, NC State's playing some good football right now and some great defense. They've just got to find a way to make some of these plays, even if they are a little bit more difficult than the norm. Sixth punt of the game for Wake Forest. Ooh, that'll help. Hoyt, fair catch made beyond the 20. Flag down. Penalty marker. Well, the punt was 42 yards, and let's get the official word from Gary Patterson. Running into the kicker, defense, five yard penalty is declined. First down, North Carolina State at the end of the kick.
Well, next Saturday, it's doubleheader action on the CW. First, Duke takes on Virginia, then Jordan Travis, and the number four Florida State Seminoles continue their national title chase as they face North Alabama. All starts at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific only on the CW. So, Clawson declining that running into the kicker. Not a, a roughing penalty, so it wouldn't have been an automatic first down. Likes where NC State will start here with 4.51 left in the first half. From the 23 for NC State. Armstrong, he hung on to it. Rolls down to the 30 yard line. Seven yards for the rush for Brennan Armstrong. The college football playoff rankings. Florida State hanging tough at number four. James 9 0 on the season taking on Miami today. Yeah, they got those Canes at 3.30, then we've got them next week with North Alabama before they those Florida Gators at the end of the season after Thanksgiving. This one looks like Tom was going to be a first down. No whistles. So it was Raphael on the carry, scooped up by Garns. He saunters into the end zone. I thought I heard a whistle, James, at some point prior to the entry to the end zone and now Dave Clawson wants an immediate explanation. The ball carrier was Raphael for NC State the freshman from Naples Florida. The ruling on the field is a fumble by North Carolina State recovered by Wake Forest. The Wake Forest player had his knee on the ground when he possessed it. First down Wake Forest and spot of recovery. Chandler Garns picked it up. Saw that ball come out at the tail end of the play. All right, we'll take a look at it here. Can't see there. Let's listen. that ball I'm not so sure this ball was coming out when he was on his way down now remember ruling on the field is a fumble that shot right there yeah, they're taking a look at it in conjunction with the command center in Charlotte North Carolina It's Aiden Hall who knocks it out at the end of the play. Yeah, but the, the question is, is left shoulder. Is his left shoulder down before it finally comes out? You know, and I don't have a problem with no whistle here because if he gets up and starts running from that point, see, and there he's blocked by Mustafa. But if he gets up and starts running, you know, no whistle. He can go. He hasn't touched the ground at that point. But that left shoulder is the tough one. Those are the only two angles that we have. I think it will stand. Well, if it does, it would be just the third lost fumble of the season for NC State. Fewest lost fumbles in the ACC to start the day. We had a football, a shoe, a shoulder, and then Garns come out of it. Watch Garns. He took the ball. From between the officials' legs, there scooped it up and tried to go to the end zone. There you go. This will be our look right here. He's down. That's the best look at it right there. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, way far. Wow. It is a fumble. Wow, we'll take it. Just Tra what they needed, really, Tom. Exactly. Trailing 21 0 and late in our first half for Wake Forest. At home this season, where they are three and two and one and two in conference play on their home field. So that's Raphael who lost it at the tail end of the play. He thought he was down. The officials do not agree. Not enough evidence to overturn the call, which on the field was fumble and recovery by Wake Forest. Michael Kern in at quarterback. Seven change, maybe go big. Playborn spinning at the 30. Gets inside the 30 yard line. 
It's a seven-yard game. DeMond Claiborne's got a lot of promise. He's, he's the second or third highest recruit ever to come here, Dave Clawson tells us. Been a lot of schools to get him. A sophomore out of Aylet, Virginia. He's got a big-time burst. He can get free. Looking for some daylight. Close to the marker, which is at the 26. Fordham, first man there on the tackle of Claiborne, who is very close to a first down. Fordham, linebacker in there in the middle, wrapping him up, and a little help from his boys in there. Claiborne, James, against Vanderbilt here at home this season in a winning effort. 165 yards rushing for Claiborne, a career high on 26 carries, and they're going to bring out the sticks. When we were here at Georgia Tech, it was Justice Ellison, his 937 rush yards. Just a little bit short. <laughs> That's the international symbol for just a little bit short. What's that the international oh, symbol They need for? a superhero is right here in Winston-Salem. Cut into this lead that NC State has built. Two rushing TDs and a passing TD in the first half for the Wolfpack going on the road. <laughs> NC State has last 11 games here. James just two and nine against Wake Forest. Which has not converted a third down. 0 for 6. This is third and short. Trying to go low and short yardage for Claiborne. They only needed a few inches here. There were a lot of bodies with red hats. It's close. It's close. I'm not so sure he got it. NC State players are saying he didn't. They'll bring the chains back in. Chain gang getting a workout. Up there. Filling in. We go for it. About the same thing. What are those guys saying? The NC State fans are <laughs> the same, the same sign over there in Batman. There we go. There we go. Fourth down. Yeah. Oh gosh, he's got his headset on. He's coaching him up. I wonder if he's talking to Dorn or Trevor. At least. He's probably communicating with Trevor. So Wake Forest has only gone for it on fourth down 11 times this season. They've made three of them. They're at fourth and short right now. They, they were stuffed in a few short yardage situations in that Duke game. There's Tony Gibson. Where do they need it right now? Be careful. Hard play pass and see if they can get a, a cheap one. Up. Wake is going to burn a timeout with 2.44 to go in this second quarter. I told you next week, part of our doubleheader will be in Tallahassee for North Alabama out of the football championship subdivision against Florida State, hanging tough at number four in those college football playoff rankings and undefeated, one of seven teams in the football bowl subdivision, undefeated. Yeah, six minutes, they're about to kick against the Canes. I still think it's going to be an interesting one against Miami here today. Michigan playing one. They started at noon as well. Should be about wrapping that one up over Penn State. Not a very high sky scoring affair. Now we already know, James, that Florida State will be in that title game December 2nd in Charlotte, North Carolina. Louisville will be there if Duke beats North Carolina tonight for the victory bell. North Carolina has won the last four meetings between those two teams. And then Louisville can take care of business against Miami the following week should they need that victory. Let's see if they can take care of fourth down right here for Wake. Should be. Okay. Okay. Kern kept it. It looks like he's got enough. And he's got a first down. Needed just about 10 inches or so, and he was able to lunge forward. 
They took all they had and a little extra help push from behind. So 217. And it was NC State that won the toss, chose to go on defense to start the first half. So it will be NC State ball to start the second half. Boy, does Wake Forest need some points here in these last two minutes. It's still, though, James, just 40 timeout, total timeout. yards. North Carolina State, that's their first charge timeout of the half. North Carolina State is challenging whether the, first, the line the game was made. So the challenge has been issued. All right, let's uh, take a look at our Pacific Life game summary presented by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Yeah, first touchdown of the game after a nice sack and stop by the defense and a nice run by Concepcion. It was great on the receiving end. Jackson with his second sack, and three sacks for the defense. And there's Brennan Armstrong punching it in from right there. Near the goal line, Mims added one as well. 21 to nothing is where we sit right now. They're taking a look at the spot of that football. They're using the timeout. Here's one more look at it. This it was Kern on the keep, the quarterback for Wake Forest. And ref cam oh. takes us right into the pile. After further review, the ruling on the field stand. First down, Wake Forest. North Carolina State has charged a timeout and has no further challenges the rest of the game. I see Peyton Wilson trying to pull him back behind. <laughs> so the timeout charged to NC State. No further challenges available. 2.05 to go in our second quarter. Final two minutes of this quarter. The clock will stop to reset on the first down. Demon Deeks again, James, just 40 total yards. Trying to get on the board here late in the half. Michael Kern, the handoff, Claiborne. Loss of two. It's, it's such a fast, filling defense. Those used to watching Wake Forest on offense. You get that slow mesh, so much of it. Sometimes this defense, they, they fill those gaps so fast. There's there's no slow mesh. You, there's, you have no choice but to get rid of that football and get things going. And the penetration, no matter what style of offense you're running, that penetration is going to slow down any offense. They go backwards on that one. Batesy, how freeing is that as a linebacker to be able to play that way? Well, Trevor, it's it's fun, and what's really fun when, when I watch this tape, I, I watch Fordham, I, I watch Peyton Wilson, is those big guys up front, Trevor. They do such a good job of eating up those big bodies and keeping them off of them, letting them run sideline to sideline. And then when you've got an aggressive defensive coordinator, oh, it just it just makes it all kinds of fun. Burn down near the goal line. Ball well, hits the turf, and that's incomplete. Banks, the receiver for Wake, Aiden White, defensively. A little bit more time here for Kearns. Activity at his feet, but standing in there strong, and Aiden White just keeps on doing what Aiden White does. Both Aiden White and Shaheen battle. All ACC last year, Aiden White was. Outstanding cornerback play, and that certainly helps a defensive coordinator. You don't have to worry. You can take receivers, take that whole side of the field out, not worry about it because you got a guy that can man up with anyone. It just it frees you up to do so many things. A lot of, a lot of fun chess pieces, if you will, for Tony Gibson on this defense. <laughs> That's not chess-like behavior, though, is it? I rate chess etiquette. West Virginia guy right there. A lot of great coaches in the game of football, college football especially, that have come out of the state of West Virginia. 
Nick Saban, of course. Jim Grow is a name that comes to mind. He's, he's a West Virginia guy. He won a lot of games here at Wake Forest. Jimbo Fisher from West Virginia, the Bowdens from West Virginia. Jim Grove was the head coach back at 06, James, when Wake Forest won the ACC title game against Virginia Tech in Jacksonville, 9 to 6. We're going to get on the board with a 39 yard field goal. Matthew Dennis is 14 of 18 on the season. He misses two tries against Duke in the most recent game for Wake. It's a line drive that is no good. No good for Dennis. Missing from 39 yards away. So just 52 seconds to go now in the quarter. Some long faces in the stands here at a legacy stadium. I will say, James, there's a lot of red in the stadium as well. These Wolfpack fans have come to support their team also. Yeah, a lot of Wolfpack fans curious to see how their team's going to perform, and I think they, they certainly answered that in the first half, the way they came out on fire, both offensively and defensively. And speaking of fire, a lot of want to there for 34. Mims moving those chains. 14 yards for Mims on the rush. If Wake does not score in the first half, James, it'd be the first time this season that they have not put points on the board in the first half. Up over 240 yards of total offense for NC State in this first half. That's on target. Armstrong hits his man for a first down at the 45-yard line. Dakari Collins hauled that one in. Ten yards. What you're looking at right here is, you know, the first play, they hand it off to Mims. If he gains one or two yards, maybe they kind of ease on into the locker room. But after that first down run, let's heat it up. And Dave Doran quickly with the timeout. Brennan Armstrong on the ground. Seven carries, 87 yards, and a touchdown so far, James. Yeah, so comfortable, so confident back there. And he just got that new new life in him after he thought maybe perhaps he had started his last college football game. Things just weren't clicking quite right. And after starting the first five games, MJ Morris took over. He was still playing, still a, a big part of this team. Big part of that win against Miami. And a leader on this team. And Morris decided the red shirt after four games earlier this week. He's your guy again. He seems to be enjoying it, that's for sure. Escapes the pocket. That'll be a horse cut. And he got pulled down to the turf there at the 42. Jacob Roberts with the aggressive tackle and a loss of Charlotte last season for NC State. Ready to go with the second half of ACC football on the CW. So glad that you're with us. And there will be no return. All right, just moments ago, Trevor Scales catching up with the head coach of Wake Forest, Dave Claus. Here with head coach Dave Claus. Coach, how do you get something going offensively? I mean, you know, they're bringing a lot of blitz, and we're giving our playmakers a chance to make plays, and we haven't come up with a contested catch yet. So when our offense is good and people blitz, we got to win the one-on-ones. I thought Michael Kern threw some very catchable balls, but right now they're outplaying us in every phase of the game. Their defensive backs are outplaying our receivers. They're winning both sides of the line of scrimmage. It's not even competitive right now, and that was just a really, really bad half of football. So, um, you know, right now we're we're getting embarrassed and, and obviously that's on me i appreciate it coach best of luck in the second half well trevor right like that you can see the fire that was lit under that defensive line on that first snap anyway talking about getting dominated both sides of the of the offensive and defensive line and defensively stop behind the line of scrimmage on the first snap so a good way to start the second half after can imagine what the locker room was like in that Wake Forest side there during half time. Timeout, North Carolina State. First charge timeout of the half, 30 second timeout. 
So the Wolfpack using their first timeout very early in the second half and looking for their first win here, James, in Winston-Salem since 2015 when they won on the road 35-17. Oh, it's, it's been more than an adventure. I mean, just like last week. Remember last week that uh, we highlighted Georgia Tech's struggles up in Charlottesville. They had they had just hadn't had any luck up there, and that goes way back to the days when Brent Key was a player. And it's, it's a little bit more of the same. The hex has been on for the Wolfpack, but looking pretty good in the first half on both sides of the ball. How about this? After the timeout, a little wrinkle. Hussain came up with it for four yards. Armstrong threw it. Yeah, and it was, it was a direct snap to Casey. He hands it off to Armstrong. Concepcion had a rush of 65 yards to set up the first TD of the game for Robert and I in the NC State offense. A 20-yard pass play. Armstrong to Gray for his first career receiving TD for Gray. And now third and long. Armstrong passed at the 35 yard line. That's the same. He got spun down. That's going to be really, really close. And the chains are moving. It is a first down on the plate of Lassane in eight yards. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought Deshaun Jones did a good job of coming up and securing the tackle. Not quite soon enough to hold them behind those sticks. So opening drive of the second half, and Armstrong in the pack picking right up where they left off. And the first down on this first drive. Armstrong was six of eight through the air, 48 yards, did most of his damage on the ground with eight carries and 90 yards. Pulls it back, wants to throw. Looking and looking. And now heading to the sideline, he gets shoved out of bounds. Penalty marker. On that Wake Forest sideline. That's Kevin Pointer. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit out of bounds, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, it was back to that Duke game, a couple of these, so costly. And, you know, here's a guy, Kevin Pointer. He's been playing so hard. You turn on that Duke tape against the Blue Devils. He had the, the quarterback pressure. He forced a fumble. Had you know, force the interception rather there in the game and you know upset with himself but he just he's a junior he's got to be smarter than that they had some some freshmen some younger year guys make a couple mistakes on the penalty front against duke that were costly and this is an upperclassman you can't have that just going to take all they can to get back into this football game from the 48 of wake pass too high for the intended receiver lassane from armstrong Wake Forest needs a comeback to snap a two-game losing streak, and they've also lost, James, five of their last six games. Last win was at home, that game where they scored late against Pitt to win 21-17, October 21st here in Winston-Salem. That wasn't an easy one, and that, we've seen two quarterbacks in this game, and that was the third quarterback who's played this year, Marucci. Armstrong. That's your quarterback right there. And just just running through one, two, three would be tacklers. Just that strong lower body. A whole lot of grit. Want to getting it up there. Could have been a stop for maybe a no gainer. We're taking a look at our ref cam, which presented by DirecTV. Stop compromising, start watching. Upgrade to DirecTV. What a great view that is. Take you right down on the field, right into the action. That's what James Bates used to see every Saturday when playing for a national championship back in 96 for the HBC head ball coach. This was going to be close. Yeah, and it was unobstructed because we didn't have face masks back then. <laughs> oh, wait a so second. So it was just now. like that ref cam. <laughs> <laughs> Not that long ago. Well, could bring up fourth down age. here, James, on this play. It's good to see on these short yardage situations, quarterbacks going under center and being able to go under center and take that snap. And he is just short. 
One for one on fourth down of the game for NC State. This would be big here if Wake can get a stand, get that ball in their offense's hands. Oh! Two players collided. That was Mims. He ran into a teammate and pinballed off him and got the first down. Three yards. It's Penix that he bounced off of. Yeah, even the, from the get-go, the snap was a little bit wonky and it, it, the timing was a little bit off, but a good job by Mims. You're just treating it like it's that goal line. You just find a way to get there. We've seen him so many times in those short yardage situations, keeping this drive alive. So the first down, so that's two for two on fourth down in the game. NC State's only gone for it on fourth down 11 times this season now. Timeout, North Carolina State, that's their second so that's, charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. That's the second timeout by NC State early in this third quarter and leading 21 0. My plan, the plan for fans. On the tackle, Ray Agnew, part of the ACC football honors class from NC State. All ACC in the late 80s, twice in the team MVP in 1989. First round pick of the New England Patriots, and he won a Super Bowl back in 2000 with the Rams. Ninth play of the drive coming up for NC State and Brennan Armstrong. Mims tracked down and dropped. Loss on the play. Kevin Pointer got to him and a loss of two. Yeah, knifing through there, making up for that flag earlier on this drive. And it, it was a an impressive get off by that offensive line. Just washing down Wake Forest, but nobody there for 91. As he came penetrating through and dropping Mims for a loss. Second 12. Five receivers set. For NC State and Armstrong. Looking left. Take it off. Cut at the 35 and then tackled. Dylan Hazen dropped him after a three yard gain for Brennan Armstrong on the rush. Good job there by Hazen. Armstrong's, he's not easy in open field, especially when he's got that, that change up where he can run through you. Good wrap up, good strong tackle. Well, hold it right there. Hazen's had a couple of nice plays in this game. Just at 100 yards right now. Those 12 carries for Brennan Armstrong. That was something that they didn't really do much with, with Morris. Morris can run, but they, they chose not to put him in these situations where they with these design run plays. Not that that one was for Brennan Armstrong. Here's a third and long. Slips that pass out on third down to Concepcion, and he gets pushed out of bounds. They're going to call it a run. Davis pushed him out. Nice hustle play there by Jaheen Davis. That's a defensive end. Getting out of there like a linebacker flying through there or a safety maybe. Well, here we got. We got a guy that can boot it, that's for sure. Harvison hit a 57-yarder against Duke. School record 57-yarder in career long. That's surprising. 11 of 13 on the season from 54 yards away. It's no good. Missed it off to the left for Narvison. So the lead stays at 21 0 here in the third for NBA. The 36 yard line of Wake Forest. First and 10. Michael Kern is in there. Rich Griffiths played the first three series of the game. Then had to come out. That pass is complete. Height. First down yardage on the play. There is life in the Demon Deacons. Battle on the tackle. There you go, changing it up a little bit. Goes under center. On the boot, just rolling them out, giving them some time, which, you know, so many times, even back to that Georgia Tech game, you know, we talked about guess, the sacks and, and the turnovers. There was so much pressure. Put those quarterbacks on the edge, and I don't feel a little bit more comfortable. Trying to do it on the ground, right along that 50 yard line. Previous play was 13 yards. This for two. Claiborne, the sophomore on the rush. 
Claiborne has big playability, but this defense, it held him in check so far in this game. Claiborne ran for 81 yards in the loss against Duke. This play, Williams, it's out. Yeah, lost it. NC State says it has the football. Remember we talked about the Wake turnovers. And they're still talking about it. Ruling on the field is a catch. Fumble recovery by North Carolina State. First and ten. First down, NC State on the cover. Great job there. That's Sean Brown. Or I beg your pardon, Robert Kennedy coming in, punching it out. He's the first one there. Catch is made, football move, so that's a fumble, and that's an NC State recovery. Keyshawn Williams and Dave Dor uh, Clawson rather just talked to Trevor at halftime coming out. He said, hey, we've got to catch these balls, these contested balls. Well, now you catch one, you can't turn it right over. Finally had a little bit of life on that defense. And Shaheen Battle going to go sign the bone. Turnover bone that Tony Gibson has. He says he wants some dogs, and the dogs get to sign the bone. Whoever signs it the most during the season after a turnover gets to take it home, Trevor. Taking those those bones home. What's going on down there? Oh, man, I was going to go back to Dave Clawson and the point that you were making regarding the turnovers. He talked about the five points of pressure, too, the last of which being the mental capacity to make sure that you hold on to that rock, especially in traffic. Again, they've been drilling it all season long. It just seems to not necessarily panning out the way that they want it to. NC State back in possession of the football after the fumble recovery. Rafael on the run for Wake. That's now 19 turnovers on the season. That's near the bottom of the conference in the ACC. And Coach Clawson identified that issue in our meetings yesterday almost immediately. Well, and on the other side of that turnover coin, it's 19 turnovers gained by this Wake Forest defense. That was second in the ACC at 18. Coming in. Let's see with that complimentary football that Doran preaches if they can get some points off that turnover. Open man, 42 yard line. Concepcion. First down, NC State. Mustafa on the tackle and 12 yards on the pass play. Everybody in black and gold holding their breaths in here when number 10 gets his hands on the ball, makes the first guy miss. Fortunately for Deacon fans, at least they forced him back inside. It was Deshaun Jones on the coverage initially. He lets him outside there, and it's off to the races. But inside, where you've got your buddies coming over to help out and lift Mustafa, able to drop him, but the damage is done with the first down yardage. 49 catches now on the season for Concepcion, third in the ACC. Not a lot for Rafael, maybe a yard. Concepcion, by the way, James, also second in the ACC in touchdown receptions with six for the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Don't forget that doubleheader coming up next week. We'll get it started at 3 Eastern. <laughs> I'm ready. We'll be in Tallahassee. Our crew will be in Tallahassee. Whistle stops the play. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 10, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. We'll get to see Jordan Travis, a Heisman Trophy candidate, late in the season. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a chance to chat with him as well. Incredible young man as well as a football player and there's the best of the best in college football right now anyway and some guys have some big matchups today. Penix Jr. they go against Utah, Jaden Daniels and the Tigers. Daniels was injured. He is going to play tonight against the Florida Gators and the other Death Valley. Armstrong moving left and throwing and caught inside the 15. Collins. I mean, that was a rope off the left arm of Brennan Armstrong, and Collins was ready for it, 28 yards. Incredible catch, good job. That's Clawson earlier talking about making those, those tough catches. 
that, that one right there, you, you got to go up and get it, but he brings it down to Kari Collins, who did play at that ACC version of Death Valley at Clemson before transferring over down there inside the 15 yard line. Three for three in the red zone in the game for NC State. Armstrong floats it to the end zone. Deflected away in a clean play. Collins was in the end zone. Kalen Carson, number one, in all gold and black to make the play for Wake Forest. They go right back at 86, try to get him back to back, but a nice defensive play. Open high point in that ball. Down by Carson. And through the coverage of Keon Coleman against FSU. He's been on 10 a lot today. Casey Concepcion for NC State. Armstrong got belted near the 20 and dragged to the turf. That's the second sack of the game for Wake. Chalen Garns, number nine. Loss of six on the play for NC State. Nice job here by Garns coming from way off. Has to time that up. Defensive coordinator Brad Lambert dialing it up at the right time for a big drop in nowhere for Armstrong to sneak out. Third down and 16. From the 20 on third down. Armstrong, his arm might have been hit on the follow through. Kevin Pointer was in there. So now fourth down for NC State. Could be another chance for Narvison, James. Pointer had the, the quarterback pressure forced the interception against Duke. It looked like he was going to have a chance of doing it again right there. NC State, lucky that one hit the turf. Look at Shimko. Look at our guy Shimko. That's a great look from the ref can of Shimko. Best long snapper in college ball, perhaps, right there. Shimko has never snapped a bad one. Huh? Oh, man, there he is. Where? Let's keep it on. Keep it on Shimko. There, I mean, you can't get any closer to the action than that. The review. I guess they're looking to see if it was an incomplete pass or a fumble. The line of scrimmage was at the 20. So watch that left hand. If it if it's coming forward after further at all, review, the ruling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. Fourth down. If it's coming forward at all, it's a pass. And, and that's what they're calling it right there. So here comes Shimko and Narvison one more time. So they will return the football to the 20 yard line. This is going to be in the neighborhood of a 38 yarder coming up for Narvison. Told you about his long range field goal against Duke. Only points of the game, by the way, James, a 57 yarder. Duke scored the rest of the points in that one and won that game 24 to 3. That was in Durham. But then they followed it up with the victory against Clemson and then. Miami last week to get bowl eligible. Both of those home wins. Narvison has missed again. Two chances in the third quarter, and he comes up empty both times with 3.12 to go, Jens. Can NC State keep pitching the shutout on defense, though? Unable to get another field goal, but Wake Forest unable to score. Now, if you're a Wake Forest fan, trailing 21-0 to NC State, which won 
the battle between these two teams a season ago in Raleigh. Jordan Travis, we'll see him on the CW next week against North Alabama. Travis, third in the ACC in touchdowns. He's only thrown two interceptions. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate, and we'll get an up-close look at him next week in the tradition of Heisman Trophy winners at Florida State. We saw a Heisman Trophy winner last week at Virginia yeah. on the sidelines for Georgia Tech. Chris Wenke was the quarterback's coach for Georgia Tech and Brent Key. Well, I played against one in Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward. Florida State up. Jameis Winston, 2013 National Championship year. There's the score. They're early in the second quarter. Knowles up on Miami, 10 to nothing. North Alabama, the opponent next week from the football championship subdivision. Wade trying to get something going with Williams. Fighting hard. Up to the 27-yard line, he got four. Closing in on two minutes to go in the third quarter, and Wake trying to get something going. Although they have struggled in this situation, 0 for 8. And third down in the game for the Deeks. Eleventh in the conference for the season. Complete body of work on third down. Walking up, here they come. Third and three. Trying to beat that pressure, incomplete. At the 35-yard line, Jamal Banks against Aiden White, and it's incomplete. Aiden White, at least three pass breakups here today. With a couple just like that. Good job, not too aggressive, not drawing the flag. And that right there is an example. They brought everybody, just man on the outside. Hey, you know when you got White in battle? Shoot, you can trust him. You can trust him in man coverage and bring the house and put the pressure on Kern. Good job defensively once again. No, 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 no. Sixth no. time today, three and out for Wake Forest. Mora on the punt. Coit, momentary juggle. Appeared to slip down on the turf at about the 33. 43 yards on the punt, the return of six from Jalen Coit. Rasheem Davis on the tackle. Spencer sisters. It's been a fantastic season of ACC football on the CW. We've had some incredible matchups, legendary, if you will, at times. Well, you know, and even with this one, if this one stays the way it's going, with NC State on top, it's the upset is in the, in the form of they haven't been able to win here. They've had terrible luck playing on the road in Winston Salem against Wake Forest. You know, last week uh, wasn't quite the upset that we had had the previous weeks. We, of course, had that Virginia upset over North Carolina. And the Louisville losing to Pitt for their first loss after coming off of that big Notre Dame win. And only loss so far this season for Louisville after its win against Virginia on Thursday. In fact, should North Carolina lose in the game for the victory bell against Duke tonight, that would ensure Louisville a spot in the ACC Championship game, December 2nd, Bank of America Stadium, Charlotte, North Carolina against Florida State, which has already qualified for the game. Armstrong sliding down. You mentioned the struggles, James, for NC State. They haven't won here since 2015. They did win at home last year. In fact, the last two years, both teams have been ranked. I mean, go back to 2021, the last time they played here. NC State was number 16, Wake was number 12, and the Deeks won it 45-42, despite four TD passes from Devin Leary. In that game, the Pack had three turnovers and 14 penalties in that loss. That's a recipe for losing on the road, that's for sure. No such problems today. That's out of bounds, shy of the 40-yard line. Concepcer Zero yards a rush. Got to find something out now. Fortunately for Wake Forest, the whole quarter to go, and the defense just stood. Morin. Knocked down at the 20. 49 yards on the punt, seven yards on the return for Taylor Morin. Newcastle's done a good job 
here this year, that, that third phase. Darvison's been pretty good. He's missed a couple here in this one, but he's been good for him. But Newcaster, big boomer there, but he's done an excellent job of pinning these, these teams near their own goal line. Narvison had only missed two field goals all season prior to today. He'd made nine in a row. But Narvison has missed twice in the third quarter from 54 and 38 yards away. And now it's Michael Kern in the Wake Forest offense struggling against this NC State defense. Wake Forest averages about 350 yards a game this afternoon. Trying to get more and coming back to it. Sails out of bounds. Shaheen Battle was back in coverage. He's got a fumble recovery. Both teams have a turnover. No points so far, James, off of those turnovers by Wake and NC State. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure that that was just a throwaway ball there because looking down the field, Kern sees excellent coverage once again by Battle, whether it's Battle or Aiden White over on the other side of the field. Good cornerback play here for these first three quarters for the Wolfpack. NC State seems to know what's what's coming in. Timeout, Wake Forest. That's the first charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. That's us. <laughs> Early timeout of the CC football on the CW is brought to you by Verizon. My plan, the plan for fans. The NC State turnover bone. Got the sign at one time so far. Battle had the fumble recovery for NC State in command. 21 0. Ellison in as the running back. This is third down and long for Wake. Tossed over the middle, complete. Out towards the 40 and a first down. Wilson made the tackle. Ellison made the catch, 18 yards. Poetic justice. Justice Ellison. Nice job sneaking out of the backfield. Coming underneath, move those chains. Big when they needed that one. Not this though. Interception, NC State. Sean Brown. Get that bone back out. Here comes Sean Brown to add his name to it once again. Had a pick in Virginia. That exciting win on the road in Charlottesville earlier this year. Finally convert on a third down, and here's one more look at it. Just right there, playing center field. Good break on the ball, reading the eyes of Kern. Going up and getting it like they've done so many times. Turnovers 19 and 20 forced by this defense here today. Pitching a shutout, 13-42 left to go in this game. Offense trying to get their first points of the second half. 33-yard return for Brown on the pick. Here's a little wrinkle again. Concepcion, that ball was on the turf momentarily. Cover up by Concepcion, Mustafa. Made the hit, loss of three. Mustafa's had a pretty good game. He's going down hill hard from that safety spot. The interception, James, for NC State, the 14th of the season. That leads the ACC fifth in the football bowl subdivision for interceptions. You know, and again, Sean Brown was more of a special teams guy early on when you had Ashford and Harris still out there. He stepped in and has really done a good job. How about eight different players have interceptions this season for NC State? Peyton Wilson's got a lot of costumes in, in the stands here today. It's really a couple weeks past Halloween now, but they're still making good use out of it, which is smart. Legacy Federal Credit Union Stadium opened up its Grove Stadium back in 1968. Wake Forest difficulty getting near the end zone. 
They have gotten to the NC State 36 yard line and no closer as far as field position is concerned. Michael Kern came in in the first quarter for Mitch Griffiths. Tate Carney on the carry. Just three. Tate Carney on the carry. Kern playing a little bit banged up here today. The shoulder, but I'd say probably the majority of football players out there in college ball right now got some sort of a ding that they're dealing with this late in the season. He's throwing some pretty good balls, Tom. Continues to work right here. Just got to take care of it. First down to Fields for 12 yards. Mike Forrest is averaging 22.1 points per game. James, that is 13th in the ACC this season. Started out 3-0. and And we had their game here against Georgia Tech, won by the Yellow Jackets. Had a win October 21st against Pitt at home. But outside of that, five losses in the last six games for Dave Clawson. Not used to that sort of thing. No. I mean, they've been to seven straight bowl games, James. You know, they, they, they had a lot of seniors celebrating senior day today, but only four starters were seniors. And pass complete, trying to fight for midfield. Wesley Grimes, nine yards. Nice job by Grimes to come back and get that ball. Attack the ball, then turn and get what you can. Gets up close to that first down marker. Third and short. Got a defense. Means a lot to these defenses trying to hold on to those goose eggs. Keep them from a first down here. Didn't get it that time, Tom. Carney came up short, maybe one. CJ Clark turned around and saying hi to you. <laughs> there in the ref camp. Fourth and one. What we got? The toss is incomplete. First down. Stumbling down. Near the 40 yard line. Tate Carney pulls it in and converts on fourth down and gets 13 yards. Nice job by Kern. He's got two Wolfpack players right there in his face. Just enough to get it off to Carney out in the flat. Move those chains. Down to 840 left in the game. Second time to wake gone for it on fourth down of the game. This is inside the 30 yard line. A committee tackle from NC State. And that's close to first down yardage as well. Ten yards on the play. Once again, Fields coming up with the catch. Fordham on the stop. And a sense of urgency now as they go down and try to get those first points. Obviously, first things first, got to score. And got to think that, got to get creative starting right away with so much ground to make up. Kern, miscommunication. Despite that incompletion, Trev, Wake Forest starting to move the football, maybe a little bit of traction, and we got time on that clock. That's exactly right, and obviously the situation dictates their pace, but also they like to do the tempo thing. They are comfortable in that set, so long as they are stringing plays together just in a meticulous manner, and that's exactly what they seem to be doing, finding a little bit of comfort in that up-tempo pace. Trevor, this is the ninth play of the drive right now for Wake. Just a moment ago, I told you they got to the 36 of NC State. Now they're inside the 30. This is their best work all afternoon long and into the evening hours. Down to the 20-yard line. Horatio Fields been a popular target on this drive. And the key to them finding success is getting that ball out quick. We know that the pressure is going to be relentless from NC State. So, so long as you are able to time up your routes, everybody's on the same page, that's the one way you're going to find success in this. See if they can find success on third and short. Trying to keep this drive rolling inside the red zone here on third down. Kern looking left, escapes the pocket, throws it down near 
the end zone. Looking for Fields. Aiden White was in coverage. And now fourth down. Once again, Tony Gibson brings the house. Everybody. The two guys out there in coverage. You've got White and you've got Battle. Once again, you can trust them. One more fourth down. How about that 2013, it's been a while since they finished with a zero on the offensive side. Uh oh. Something didn't look right there. Kern throws it one on one. Down by the goal line. And caught for the touchdown. Alexander in the end zone. That was on fourth down. Second converted fourth down of the drive. Hold on a second base. Well, they'll go for two here. They obviously eight three times. They won't have to factor in a field goal, but what a great job by Kern to stay calm after the quick snap. I don't think he was expecting it that early. Let's see if they can turn it into a two-score game. First TD pass of the season, Kern. Looking for the two. Intercepted on the goal line. Being returned by Scott. Scott down the sideline. All the way for the return and two. Wake was going for two. NC State's number two gets two on the return. And he is winded. Yeah, he is. I wasn't sure he was going to make it. Wow. Wow, one more turnover. That's three. Jalen Scott, big man, the senior from Shelby, North Carolina. After this touchdown, great job by Alexander. Go out and get that ball. And here you go. Jalen Scott's going to catch his breath. Grab that Sharpie and sign the turnover bone. It's 26 to 6. Jalen Scott did a 100 yard dash as he intercepted the two point attempt by Wake Forest. Not an official interception, but he grabbed it at about the goal line, James, and went the distance to make it 26 6. They better still let him sign that turnover bone. That's, the turnover bone isn't official. <laughs> it isn't? <laughs> well, it's, it's beyond official. <laughs> Here we go, onside kick now. 7.15 left. Mm. NC State has it. Rosner covered it. The onside attempt. Updated ACC standings. Florida State and Louisville in those college football playoffs. North Carolina rankings. North Carolina also in the top 25. And they're playing Duke tonight. Georgia Tech lost to Clemson, so they're out of that picture. Had a bit of a long shot at the beginning of the day. A couple wins for Clemson after losing in Raleigh a couple weeks ago. And update on that Florida State score in Tallahassee. It's 10 to 7 with Miami scoring in that one. NC State defeated Miami at home to become bowl eligible a week ago. And get Coach Doran, 78th victory as the head coach of the Wolfpack, the most in school history. Mims, a little conversation with Ref Can. That was pretty cool, though, because, you know, you, you see the camera and you see a guy, you, you think automatically he's just talking to the camera, but he doesn't even, he doesn't realize he's talking to the, he's just talking to the ref. You know, it's like James Jackson, when he, a couple weeks ago, for Virginia, when he had that interception at the end of the game, we had the great shot on ref cam, and he, he didn't realize what it was on the ref's hat until after the game when he saw the highlights. He said, oh, that's what that was. And the funny thing about that, with Mims on the carry, nowhere to go, maybe a yard. The funny thing about the Jackson interception was we had the referee signaling catch because we weren't sure if Jackson had secured it to secure the upset win against number 10 North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So we had that fantastic replay.
And Virginia, for the first time in school history, beat a top 10 opponent on the road. As we take a look at our ref cam presented by DirecTV, stop compromising, start watching, upgrade to DirecTV. It's a view unlike any other. <laughs> you see. Through the line. Finally tracked down at the 25. Concepcion. 22 yards. Glasker on the tackle. Man, direct snap. And just when, when he makes up his mind, he's going to go north and south. And look, even, even with the leap, feet hit the ground and automatically he's just churning. Going. He's been fun to watch. KC Concepcion, you know, it's he's got all these great numbers for a freshman. He's on the semifinalist list for the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year Award. But, you know, freshman aside, age aside, his numbers are up there with the best players in the ACC, some of the best players in the country as well. Concepcion is up to 86 yards rushing. Mims got the call there. Delbert Mims the third in the second quarter, a one-yard TD run. Mims leads the team in that category with now seven rushing touchdowns. Vernon Armstrong, also a rushing TD in that second quarter of one yard. In fact, he almost scored right before Mims did. He got tripped up right near the one-yard line on a long rush for Armstrong. 14 carries, 94 yards, and a touchdown. He'll let his back do the work here Mims. for Mims. Fighting for him. It'll be interesting. Armstrong will get a chance. At, it's such a big rivalry up there in Virginia. Virginia, Virginia Tech, and a game that they, they didn't get to play last year at the end of the season because of the tragedy that happened there in Charlottesville. And so next week, Brennan Armstrong and this wolf pack they'll head on up to blacksburg to take on it a, a virginia tech team that, that didn't have the best of starts but they played some pretty good ball here as of late beat virginia tech at home last year 22 21 for nc state mj morris who has decided to red shirt this season had three td passes and led the comeback from 21 3 down against Virginia Tech, and they'll be in Blacksburg next week. Assuming this score holds, they'll be looking for win number eight on the season for Coach Doran. It is fourth down. I think he's going to maybe use a timeout here as it ticks down. One second left on the play clock. Bowl eligible nine times under Doran. That's the most of any head coach in school history and timeout taken. Great conversation with Coach Doran this week. He talked about that Miami victory. He classified it, James, as an epic night. A lot of family and friends on hand. He went past the legend Earl Edwards. We've got more football coming up for you. The doubleheader next Saturday. We start with Duke and Virginia. And then we go to Tallahassee. North Alabama, the opponent for Florida State. Right now, number four in the college football playoff rankings. How about Dave tell, telling us, he said, yeah, I went out to, got some, did some tailgating with my family and friends that came down to celebrate. It was a big night. He, he said on his press conference, he was listening to music, but he didn't say what kind. He said there's only two kinds, country and western. <laughs> what has he got here on fourth and one? Robert and I and Dave Doran. Two for two in the game on fourth down, and you can make that three for three forward progress. It's about the 13-yard line. They only needed one. Armstrong on the 
you know, but that's that's kind of the way college football is now. And I, I don't envy any of these coaches. You know, I mean, look look at the high of becoming the all-time wins leader at NC State University as a head coach. Like, you know, just beating you know, Clemson. And, and then beating Miami the next weekend in such a, you know, a goal line stand, 97 yard drive, just such a fun night there at home. You got all your family and friends, and then, you know, the next week, early the next week, you're you're told that your your starting quarterback has decided to redshirt, and you got to change it up, and then you got to answer all those questions and, and figure out what's going on right there. So it's it's never easy for these head coaches, that's for sure. And playing in a place where you've only won twice since 2001 prior to this afternoon. It appears that NC State is on its way to victory to improve to 7-3 and three and 4-2 four and in conference play. Robert and I reunited with Brennan Armstrong this season. You know, we thought it was an automatic, James, that that combination would produce a lot of success. It did not happen, but as is the landscape of college football here in 2023, Armstrong back in as the starting quarterback, and he is leading them to victory this afternoon and now into the evening hours. Well, and, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be on the opposing side of this offense here in these these next couple of weeks. Virginia Tech, it's going to be interesting, and then of course North Carolina. At season's end. That's down to about the three for Raphael. Seven yards on the carry. Two TDs on the ground, one through the air for NC State. And a 45-yarder from Braden Narvison. Field goal here in this fourth quarter. Blake Forrest, the touchdown pass from Kern to Alexander. And then the attempt at the two-point conversion was returned all the way back for two by Jalen Scott. A little bit of activity after the whistle. Got it, got it. Need to play it cool here. Keep NC it. State just trying to run out that clock. That's all. Well, we have a moment. We'll take a look at our Pacific Life game summary presented by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. What a day for Brennan Armstrong. First, he throws this one to Julian Gray. First career TD reception, Gray, James. Yeah, how about that? Armstrong looking pretty comfortable back in the saddle and pretty physical as well, doing it through the air. And they're on the ground, little look back after that. And don't forget, Tony Gibson's defense forcing the two turnovers today and picking the ball off on a two-point try as well. And nice win. And a very tough place to go home with one for NC State.